Three, two, two, one. Mrs. Vanessa Chopra. Hello. Welcome to the VIP Collective. You are on the Wedding Expert Podcast. It is wonderful to see you. Now, for everyone who's listening and or watching, because we are both audio and video, we have switched up from the COVID advice series and we have moved to the big day mini series. Now, the focus of this series is that we're actually speaking with our past guests who are experts and who were married and some of the lessons they learned and we also are inviting on some brides and you fall into the category of a bride who was recently married November 8th of 2019. Yes. So we were lucky enough at Career McDonald Films to film your wedding and it was an amazing day. I'm excited to talk about it with everyone Mm -hmm. and I think you know the whole reason to do this is just to give a little bit of content. There aren't a lot of weddings happening this year. A lot of people have moved to 2021, but I think there's always something that you can take away from someone who's gone through the process and some of the key things that they've learned while trying to execute a wedding on their own, because that is one thing you did is you planned your own wedding. And not (laughs) only did you plan one day, you had multiple days because you had a blended ceremony and a blended wedding. So you had a Hindu Catholic ceremony that you were putting together. So I'm very excited to have you. That was your very long-winded intro, but it's nice to see you again since I haven't seen you since November. Yes, so nice to see you um, as well. I appreciate you taking time to jump on the podcast and fill in some of our listeners about your experience with uh, planning a wedding. So let's walk through some of the beginning phases of it. Now, just for a bit of background, just tell us about um, when you and Naveen met and when you got engaged. Yeah, so Naveen and I, um, funny story, we actually lived in really close proximity to one another for most of our lives. Um, We actually met, though, in May of 2015 um, at a friend's backyard party. So common friend, mutual friend. um, And then I sort of, there was always something about Naveen. I started messaging him um, and creeping him online. (laughs) And eventually, I I would say it took almost six months, but he finally asked me out on a date. And um, ever since our first date, we were sort of inseparable. Um, And he always says, he's like, I knew you were something special. I just needed to wait out the summer, Um, (laughs) which he did. And we went on on a date and the rest is sort of history. Um, We got engaged, I want to say, a year almost a year exactly before the wedding. So in October of 2018, we were engaged um, at the same exact spot that we actually had our first date. Oh, cool. So you chose to have your wedding on a Friday. So it was Friday, November 8th um, at the King Eddie downtown, King Edward Hotel in Toronto, Ontario, um, which is a beautiful location. Was that somewhere you kind of had on your list when you were... Yes. So it was, I always said, I never, I, I never really pictured myself getting married. Um, and I always said, like when I saw the reno in the crystal ballroom, I walked in and I always said, if I ever get married, this would be the spot I get married. And I, I sort of had, like, I didn't even know the guy at the time. Um, I just knew that that was the ballroom I was going to get married in. And oh, you I mean, you didn't know who you were going to marry. You just knew that that's where you were going to go. <laughs> that that's where I was going to get married. Um, oh, wow. And I sort of like, you know, like you put something on a vision board and it just happens. Like the perfect guy comes and the perfect location. And Naveen saw it, I think years later. And we, I brought him actually once to stay at the King Eddie and we popped in while a wedding was happening. And I was like, you know, I would really want to get married here if we ever got married. So you, were um, dropping hint, you were dropping hints? <laughs> yeah, he kind of laughed it off and was like, sure, whatever. You're like, no, uh, I'm actually very serious right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. The date is good. Yeah. Uh, and then we chose to get married on a Friday just because we wanted to do, like the whole wedding was really, we wanted to do things a little differently. Um, and I just thought a Friday in November was, was nice. And it was also, I think, because we planned the wedding um, on a shorter timeline and Friday was just available for us. So we took it. 
Amazing. And so let's talk about, let's talk about the actual wedding day. What, how did you feel about the decision of getting ready at the same location as where your wedding was going to be? Like, what were some of the benefits of doing that? Oh, it was like, it was so huge. I, and like, that was, I think another really big factor for us picking a hotel um, just because we wanted both families to get ready together. Um, we didn't want like the separation of the two different houses. So we checked in, um, we had like festivities leading up to it, which were at each respective home, but we checked into the hotel the night before um, and like had our slumber parties and all that kind of stuff. And then we're just able to get ready and like things were, things were so awesome. Like I would say that was a really big part for us that we loved was being able to be at the hotel together with both families. What, um, what did you do the evening before? Were there, did you have like a dinner? What was kind of? Yeah. So planned? we planned, um, we planned a sort of little intimate dinner with our family. Um, we went to Tironi, which is really close by. Um, we had like a little family dinner and then we actually did a run through with the priest and the pundit um, the night before, which was really awesome. And being like, we had this really big ask. We wanted to do two separate ceremonies um, and we really didn't, I had never been to a wedding that had two completely separate ceremonies. So I think having done the run through the night before was such a huge, huge thing for us because we walked through all of that, all of the different things. We walked through the kinks, um, the two different sort of priests got to meet each other. And then the families also got accustomed with the, the different rituals and the different steps um, that happen in both ceremonies. So it was huge. It's interesting because when you hear rehearsal, like you think, how hard can it be? You're just walking yeah. down the aisle and you're standing there or whatever yeah. the case may be. <laughs> but then when you actually get to the rehearsal, there, there is actually like timing that happens when you oh, need to yeah. start walking. And like, there is kind of a systematic process that happens when it comes to it. Yeah. So it is important. And as you're saying, it is important to have the rehearsals so that you feel confident because you, then you might have nerves not knowing what you should do. Right. For the, sure. And, and he said the same thing to me. He's like, we're walking down the aisle. We don't need a rehearsal. Um, and of course, after the rehearsal, he turned to me and he was like, yeah, this was, this was really helpful yeah. <laughs> because there are like the timing who walks first. Does mom walk with dad? Like there's different things that you just don't think of um, having never gone through it before naturally that you just need to like absolutely run through the day or a couple days before. So since you were planning that yourself, was the efficient kind of guiding you through that as you were doing that? Like who's going to walk with who and asking you those questions or did you know before you went into it, you had to have that kind of locked in? Yeah. So luckily my, my best friend is a, a former wedding planner and she had done rehearsal dinners, or, sorry, rehearsals, so many times before and I kind of I deferred to her I, I pulled a really big favor and I said Kat you need to come and you need to sort of plan this whole thing for me um <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty easy <laughs> so I was like, you figure out who walks with who and I'm cool yeah. um I just know that I should be walking with my husband at the end and she did the rest um and it was really really great and then there was things that we deferred to um the the priest or the pundit as well because they they knew more about their cultures and um yeah like it it was it was pretty great like it ended up being a seamless um seamless ceremony which was really really great and so what you did was that you actually had one ceremony you had your catholic ceremony first and then you were able to go up to your room because you were in the same hotel get changed and then yeah. come back for your second ceremony so and your guests were at ease because they weren't you know commuting and that kind of stuff right yeah, so we, like I said, like a really big thing for us was to be able to represent both different cultures. Um, and Naveen and I both had this idea of doing a Catholic ceremony and then doing a Hindu, a traditional Hindu ceremony right after. Um, and then I think somewhere in between, we're like, well, we obviously have to change outfits too. So um, there was there was a lot going on that day, but we were able to accommodate everything in the crystal ballroom. Um, we were able to do a short Catholic ceremony and then we had like a, a brief intermission of about 15 or 20 minutes, ran upstairs, got changed and then came back down for the, the Hindu ceremony, which was really beautiful. Um, and I think we like it worked out so well because the Catholic ceremony started, I think, at 430 um, and then the sunset we got like a beautiful capture of it on the video and then we had the, the Hindu ceremony at nighttime, which was beautiful. 
Absolutely. So for anyone who hasn't seen the crystal ballroom, it is like natural light. There are windows all around. There's beautiful chandeliers. It really is spectacular. Um, and yeah, we were able to capture like that sunset and that sun flare. Yeah. It was so nice. Yeah. Um, but when we met to discuss video in the beginning, you had mentioned that you had seen um, one of the creative shoots that we had done and that yeah. had spoke to you on how to set up your ceremony. So why don't you like, why don't you just walk through where you saw it and yeah, I think it was in an issue of Wedding Bells, actually. And it, it was, was in wed it was in Wedlux. 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 Sorry, wed Wedlux. Um, and it was a circular sort of altar. It was raised, and then there was um, there was chairs around it. And I had this vision. I was again like, when I get something in my head, I I have to see it through. So I had this vision of having just that and then sort of transform transforming the space and making that circular altar um the dance floor for the evening so we were able to bring that vision to life and it was such a cool space um it was really great because guests got sort of like a 360 view of the altar um and then like my immediate friends and family sort of sat in the first two rows which was really really beautiful and i think like with the sun setting and everything happening it it just looked, it looked magical. It um, did. And I think that's the one thing, like, especially like after you had mentioned that, I let all the vendors know that we worked on that creative shoot. Like it's, cause that's why we do them is that they want to inspire with like yes. different looks and you know, everything doesn't always have to be the same. You can kind of have fun with it and you can make mm -hmm. a circular, you know, seating arrangement for your ceremony, things like that. So when I let uh, the planner, which was Lauren Co, when I let her know, she was very excited to hear that, you know, people were we drawing inspiration. It. Yeah, exactly. And we added like our own flair to it too. Like I think we put um, like a circular um, altar at the front as well. Mm -hmm. And like all of these traditional elements, um, my mother-in-law felt it was really important for me to get married under a traditional Hindu um, altar. Mm -hmm. So we added that in the end and like so many different things that were added um, that just really made the space our own. But I, I think that that photo shoot for sure, because it brought this vision to life. And then we just sort of made it our own. So what was, let's talk lessons, because we're talking about the ceremony right now. What was one of the key kind of takeaways from planning the ceremony that maybe something you didn't even expect that happened and you didn't know that it would happen like that? Um, you know what, the ceremony, the ceremony was what I was most nervous about. Mm -hmm. um, but I have to say it went off without a hitch. Like it was really seamless um there was there was little things that happened throughout the day but like a big piece of advice that i was given that i would certainly pass on is that things will go wrong um and it just seemed like so min like it was i was so happy i was in such sort of a, a state of bliss that day that whatever went wrong i was like oh whatever it's it's cool um and i know that people take it different ways but it was i was just so grateful for being there I was so grateful to like be getting married in such a setting that the little things didn't really matter. I would say more of the hiccups happened uh, post ceremony, closer to the reception. Right. But yeah, I like. But you felt confident with the ceremony. Yes. I yeah. Was, like the ceremony went off with without a hitch. I would it's say like, like the, the getting changed part was a little stressful because we had to run up and and get changed, and then you also think like okay. I can get changed, but how about like the, the 16 other people that are also getting changed this 15 minute block. Um, so that was a little bit stressful, but it was pretty seamless. So you had decided to do a first look prior to the ceremony. And so yeah. why did you decide to have the first look before the ceremony? So, you know what, I'm so grateful. And, and again, like the traditional parents were like, you can't see your future mm -hmm. husband before the ceremony, but I was so grateful to have having done that because um, what was so great about it is Nav and I, it was our first look at the space as well. And it was the only time that Nav and I really had together just us two. I mean, us two and you guys, a photographer. And your favorite redhead. <laughs> <laughs> <I guess. laughs> um, it was just like such a special time between the two of us. We were like being silly we just sort of took it all in and it was such a great moment for us to spend together um and i think it just really settled any nerves that i had so it was just really nice to be with him um we joked we laughed we played and then like 
the chaos happened right after. So it was just like a really nice time to like take a deep breath, reset, take some great pictures um, and video. And then like the whole family sort of came in and we took the family and the, the bridal party group shots after. Do you find that the timing like with uh, photos and things like that just worked well just because you were staying in the same location? all day? Yes. Yeah. So that was another really big thing that I'm glad we did. We, we didn't want to be too fussy. We knew that, that we had, we were taking on a lot by having the two ceremonies in the same day. And we didn't want that added stress of having to go move to a second location. Um, so because the crystal ballroom is so beautiful and the King Eddie is, is so beautiful, we thought like, let's just do all the pictures here. There's no need to go outside. It was also November. Um, luckily it was a stunning day, but we, I mean, with November, you never really know. So we decided to do all of the photos indoors um, and in the ballroom. And that was great. The friends and family sort of got to watch each other take photos. Um, we served some food and it was just like a really nice, easy way to, to take family photos. Yeah. And again, with all of the natural light in there, it just opens up so many options for photos and for video and just the look of it. So yeah, yeah, it's really nice there. And so let's talk about kind of moving in. We've covered on ceremony. What happens in cocktail hour? So we go to cocktail hour. Did you enjoy cocktail hour with your guests or did you take that moment to yourself? Yeah. So cocktail hour was really, really great too. So we actually stayed, so we had the, the Catholic ceremony first and then the Hindu ceremony. Um, and we stayed in our traditional um, Hindu sort of attire, which was really great. And we greeted all the guests um, in that attire, which was awesome. And we didn't, we opted not to do like a traditional receiving line. We wanted to sort of float around and mingle and, and talk to everyone. And that was, again, such a great decision for us because we were able to, we were able to talk to people. We were able to have like meaningful conversations and just float around the room. Um, we took some photos, but I will say one of the things I, I shouldn't have expected was we had planned a lot of family photos for cocktail hour, but Nav and I were just more interested in being with the guests. So we really, um, I think we for like, we didn't end up doing as many family photos as we would have liked to, um, but that was okay. We, we ended up just hanging out with guests and we got some great candid shots um, with the guests, which was great. It's probably like, especially mentally, when you set up your mindset that like, now it's time to visit. Because when you're taking photos, you're like, you're on, right? You want to make yeah. sure everyone's there and you're smiling. And then as soon as you kind of leave that and you think, okay, now it's time to like, visit and connect with people, then they're two different uh, mindsets that you have. So it can be hard yeah. to then pull yourself back into like, okay, no, now we're into photo time. So separating those two things, having a dedicated photo time and having a dedicated visiting mingling time is important. For sure. Yeah, yeah, and guests tend to, everybody, like you're the star. So everybody wants your attention and they want to talk to you and they want to see you. So yeah, yeah it is <laughs> nice to have that. And I know um, something you did have was a photo booth. And mm -hmm. I think that was, how did you feel about having a photo booth? It's funny, like when, when you're planning a wedding, um, you have all these ideas and like you have all these things that you want to do. And for us, we also had a budget and we like at the end of it, we obviously came well over budget. And that was one of the things that was on the chopping block for us. We were like, you know, do we need a photo booth? And then last minute now was like, just get the damn photo booth. <laughs> um, and thank gosh we did because it was such a great um, thing for guests to do. It was placed in the cocktail area. Um, and it was just so fun. Like we, it was another really great touch point for guests to have, to interact and to mingle. Um, we did it with a lot of our guests. We made sure that we hung out around the photo booth so that anyone that wanted to have a photo with us could take one. Um, and it was just like, it was again, one of the best things that we did. Um, I would highly recommend it. And depending on like how many people were at your wedding, what was your guest count? Oh gosh. I, I, Around yeah, all a blur. I think 280 Ballpark. to 300. <laughs> so if you have 280 to 300, it's a good way for everyone to make sure they're able to give you the memory that they were there as well. Because getting a shot, it's never guaranteed you're going to get a shot of 300 people um, within your photos, right? So that is kind of a nice, a nice thing that they can be interactive and make themselves a part of the memory. Yeah, and and my sister did this really, really beautiful thing where she actually took all the photos and got them like done up in a book um, and it was a great memory to have. And now I have like 
even though I didn't get to have the photo with that guest, I have these awesome photos of people just being like playful and fun. And it's such a beautiful memory. Awesome. And so let's, let's go into the reception. So we are, had some cocktails, we visited, we've mingled, and then we yep. move into the reception. So what were some of the, the key things in the reception um, that you kind of had to plan and maybe didn't go as expected? Yeah. So Nav and I, so, I mean, we, we love a good party and our whole sort of idea for the wedding was we wanted, we want to really pay tribute to the traditions, but come reception, we want it to be a party. We want it to be different than any wedding that we've ever experienced. And one of the big things for us, um, because we were doing the circular dance floor, because we wanted people seated around it, we decided to not do like a traditional sit down dinner. Um, and we decided not to do traditional seating, um, or sorry, assigned seating. And that was like a big thing. That was a big point of resistance for our parents initially. Um, but I'm glad we stuck to our guns because in the end it ended up being such a cool thing. People were on the dance floor for most of the night. Um, we did different stations. So we did an Indian station, a sort of more American station and an Italian station where people could sort of float around and eat whatever they wanted um, and not feel like super fussed about when they were eating. So it ended up working out well. Um, and I'm super, super glad that we ended up doing that because there was points in the planning process that I was like, you know, it would just be so much easier to have everyone sitting down and have a seated dinner and, and do it the traditional way. Um, but in the end, it was like really, really special. And I would say like, stick to your guns because we had this vision we had resistance at probably every point of planning the wedding but in the end it was awesome let's talk lessons learned in the reception so when you were planning like what's something what's a lesson what's a lesson from the reception that you had hmm um you know i wouldn't say like so the reception there was a few mishaps there was um our dj kept losing power which was really disappointing at the time again grand scheme of things like things don't really matter um but that was something that i was just like super disappointed of in the moment luckily it was while well, everyone was eating dinner um and it wasn't in the intros so like silver lining there it happened at the right time um, and then we actually, I, I left it to my in-laws. They had organized Hindu dancers to come in and like do like a whole Bollywood dance that night. And they actually ended up showing up to the venue the day after. Um, I was going <laughs> to say, we didn't capture that. <laughs> yes, you didn't capture that because they showed up the day after and we didn't hire you uh... the day after. Um, so like, again, but we, the funny thing is we didn't even realize, I knew that they were scheduled to come we were so in the moment and like things were, were so hectic that we didn't even realize till the next day when they called and they're like, Hey, we're at the venue, but we don't think this is your wedding. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, I think my one piece of advice would be, um, if you're planning your wedding, which again, like is, is a huge undertaking, um, just to double and triple check everything to just really make sure like family is awesome and they were so helpful, but just like really at the end of it, a week before making sure that you follow up with all your vendors and you, you double confirm. And um, I think it happened with my Mendy too, where we ended up changing the dates really last minute. And of course I told all of my guests, but I didn't tell my henna girl. So she like the night before I was like, okay, so you'll be here at 10 AM. And she's like, yeah, 10 AM on Wednesday. Um, so little things like that, that you really like, that you think are, are super, super little and small, um, when you're planning a wedding and when you're coordinating a million different things, these things are really easy to forget sometimes. Um, so did you so, have a, did you have a grand master sheet? Did you have some kind of system you were using that helped you with tracking things? Yeah. So I put everything in sort of like, a at Google doc where I, I coordinated, like I had different sheets. I had the day of run, like rundown, I had my shot list, all of the different things. Um, I will say though, the week before a wedding, things do go out the window. Like so many things are happening. I think also because we had like a few different events leading up to the wedding, um, it wasn't an ordinary wedding. It was, it was almost like three mini weddings leading up to the wedding. So it was really, really hectic. And then there was a point where I sort of had to step back and be like, you know what, it's my day, I'm gonna enjoy it. Things are gonna go wrong. 
Um, but luckily I had an amazing support system of, like I said, my friend was a planner. Um, she stepped in and saved the day. My sister was like literally the creative director of the day. She did so many things, including making my wedding dress. Um, so I had an incredible support system um, that was there with me like every step of the way and, and things happen, but it's okay. Yeah, I think it's important to obviously have that support and having, you know, a wedding planner on your side, like a previous wedding planner on your side is super helpful too, just to kind of mitigate any of those, like yeah. <laughs> the risk and of, you know, what you may not know just as this is the first time you've done it yourself. Exactly. And you know what? I, I also, um, I really trusted everybody that I had hired and everybody that was doing stuff for me, like even down to like my aunt did my floral arrangements. So I, I was just so open to her doing whatever sort of, I gave her a color scheme, she did a sample and then she just knocked it out of the park. So I think it's, it's ultimately like at a certain point you have to just let go and be like, you know what? I trust the people I've hired. Um, like even with you guys, like you, you hire them for a reason. They're the experts, let them make their recommendations. Um, and they won't steer you wrong. Like it's, it's really like, that's what you hire them for. You hire, hire them for their level of expertise um, or you hire them because they're family and they're awesome at what they do. Right. Um, yeah. And it's just doing the research. I think a lot of the times to find out who speaks to you the most or who you think you may have the most in common with or might get your vision and that kind of, that kind of yeah. direction. Absolutely. And so with the reception, um, things the party took off like you said the party was important and it showed and everyone was dancing and everyone was having a good time and how do you think you know what was one of the things that you brought it to life to make it even more exciting yeah so i would say like again one of naveen's only prerequisites was he wanted it to be like an awesome party so i think we we quickly established that we wanted a dj over a band um just because we wanted a mix of of um like their traditional music and more western music and um we wanted like a nice blend so we hired a dj who did both um we like had little touches throughout the night so we did like flip flops for the guests to dance all night um we had glow sticks we had like all these little touches to really encourage people to, to really dance all night long. And it was awesome. Like people were really on the dance floor the whole entire night. And it's, it's a bit of a risk you take too, because we didn't do the assigned seating. Um, so like that encourages people to be on the dance floor, but that also encourages people to potentially leave early if they're not having a good time. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was a fine, like it was a little risky um, and it worked because everyone ended up staying and, and dancing and having the best time. What were some of the props that you introduced? Um, we did, oh my gosh, I don't even remember. We did, I think, glow sticks. Um, the glow sticks, they were so cool on the video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I they were cool. I <laughs> also remember I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, please remind me. Yeah. Um, we did the glow sticks. We also um, did the flip flops. Um, and then the yeah. photo booth was a big part of just kind of that energy that night too, was making sure people were running out to the photo booth. Yes. Yeah. Making the photo booth was really, really cool too. Um, yeah. It was, it was just a really fun night. Yeah. It was really fun. It was, we were really grateful to be a part of it and to capture it for you. It was, there was just, there was a lot of love and it was really neat um, to see the two ceremonies that you put together because that is a unique thing that we don't see every, all the time. So, hmm. you know, and you did a really good job at doing that. So congrats to you for planning your own wedding. Now, this is the million dollar question. Would you plan your own wedding again? You know, I mean, it's so interesting. It depends on the day. If you ask me like a month after the wedding, I'd be like, no, I would, I would absolutely hand it off to someone else. Um, but I think I executed my vision really, really well. It was a really stressful time. Um, and I'm a, I'm a pretty stress-free person and I, like it got to me, but I wouldn't have changed a thing. I, I really like, even with the mishaps, even with the, the little hiccups along the way, um, I wouldn't have changed a thing cause it was so us. It was, it like, and I think Naveen would agree too. Like it really represented who we were. Um, and it's just something really cool to look back on and be like, yeah, like 
I planned this myself with the help of my sister and my family. I, I did this all myself. Um, and it was really us. Like it, it worked well. So no, I wouldn't change it. <laughs> yeah. I would say that. And I saw that too. Like you, you could tell that, you know, like there was a moment when the power went out from the DJ booth and mm -hmm. you know, like that can be a stressful thing, but you could tell that you were just in your glory. Like you were, it yes. was your day and you know, like there wasn't a lot of stress you could read on your face, which is so important because yeah. the DJ you've hired, he'll figure it out, but it's just like a little, a little blimp in the map. Right. So I think you, you could just see that you were having a good time regardless of like mishaps or anything that might've happened. Yeah. And I was so happy too. like one thing that made me really, really happy was that Naveen was really happy. Um, and like, we just spent the whole night together and he was just so happy about it. Um, I think he was like really proud of, of what we had done as well. He'll say we, I say <laughs> uh, what we had done together. So it was just like, it was a fun night and nothing like everything that could go wrong kind of did, but who cares? Like, like I said, the DJ is going to figure it out. Um, it didn't figure out the first time, figured it out the second and things went really well. And like, when people look back at it, they're not going to say like, Oh, remember when that disastrous thing happened? Um, as long as you have like, you, you bring out your personality, you have love in the ceremony and all those things, nothing else really matters. But even if there is a mishap, sometimes those can be really funny stories. And like, you know, yeah. like sometimes when, if there is something, you look back and you're like, remember when the power went out or when my yeah. aunt fell on the dance floor when she was trying, yeah. to, when she was trying <laughs> to greet us, which actually, happened. <laughs> which actually happened. And we have video yeah. footage. And not yeah. only do we have video footage, we have video footage in slow motion. So she took it. Yes. Slow, yes. slow which slow she motion. thanks you for, by the way. <laughs> she is okay for everyone who's listening. But um, it was a moment and everybody, you know, they rushed to make sure she was okay. But at the same time, you get to look back at that and just say, remember when. So, yeah, those are the things that give your, like, your wedding personality. Like, everybody... And it's so funny, like the things that people recount about the night too, you're like, oh, like I didn't even know that happened or like I didn't even know those little things mattered. So um, yeah, like it's, it's all part of the fun. I, I would say like um, the nothing really matters at the end of it as long as you have um, some, like as long as you have fun and your guests are having fun, everything else will, will work itself out. Now I have to ask, because obviously when we do produce a video, we don't sit with you as you watch the video. So when you were watching it and like kind of thrown into back into reliving that, I mean, our time frame for film delivery is between five and eight months. So you're already, you know, five to eight months out from your wedding um, mm -hmm. and you actually received it during COVID. And so what was kind of like that feeling when you were sitting there and rewatching it? Like, what were you thinking? I like it's, you guys did such an amazing job at capturing it. I just remember looking at the video and being like, wow, that was really my wedding. Um, because you're so close to it when you're, when you're planning your wedding, when you're yeah. living it, even when you're looking at the photos, like the next couple days, you're in this like really foggy headspace of exhaustion and like all these other things that it's really special that you get your video six months later um, or however long later um, because you actually get to relive it. And it was really great because you, you noticed the details that you probably missed um, on the day of. And yeah, like it's just this really special moment. I remember just thinking like, that was actually my wedding. <laughs> and it's, did you feel like you were seeing moments that you kind of like you realized may not have happened the way like, cause they always kind of, you know, come across maybe a little different when you see them on film than how they feel or if you're even not present for a certain yeah. time. Yeah, like the seeing like the, the groom side of things was really nice because you don't, you obviously don't get to be in two places at once. Um, and that's the other great thing about video is that there's so much of your wedding day and, and Nav and I really planned it so that we could be there for, for as much as possible. But there naturally is parts of the wedding, like the intros where like people are getting introduced. We're the last ones to walk in. So literally reliving that and watching like my grandparents dance for eight minutes um, is really funny because you're like, you're standing on the other side of it at your wedding and you're like, what's taking so long? Mm -hmm. And then like watching it and, and seeing people's reaction and just seeing like the party um, through another lens is really, really cool. Yeah, I think that is one part of the day when you actually don't get to see anything because you're waiting 
in the back yeah. for that to happen. So it and is I remember, awesome. I remember having such FOMO. Like I was like, I want to be at my own party. Yeah. <laughs> so the video is a really good, um, a really good refresher of like all the things that unfortunately you just can't see at. Yeah. Or how fast it goes. Cause we have heard that too, is after the ceremony, yes. we would, we've seen couples before I say, I'm glad you're here because I like, that was a blur. What just happened? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. um, and then sticking on vendors, were there any vendors that you didn't hire that perhaps you wish you had have gone with like any, anything you had left out and thought, Oh, maybe we should have done that. Or do you feel pretty confident with the selection you made? Um, I, and I, I know I told you this before, but like we, I, everyone that I wanted to hire, we did, which was really great. But I, I sort of waited till the end to hire my video, like you guys. Mm -hmm. And thank goodness we did. Like that was, and I remember saying it the next day, like my photographer and my videographer were the two best investments I made on my wedding day. Um, just because those are the memories that live forever. Like everything else is pretty temporary and everything else it will sort of come together. Um, but you want to really find a videographer and a photographer that represents who you are. And I think spending the money there was, was the best thing we, we did. Because in 10 years, you'll get to watch things back, get to look at your yeah. album again. When it comes down to 10 years from now or 20 years from now, it's something that, you know, when you take that investment and you put it over 50 years, you yeah. start going, well, maybe it was worth it because now we physically get to keep for sure. Yeah. Like it's, it's a family memory forever that like yeah. our kids will get to see one day and be like, that was, that was a pretty cool party or they'll be really embarrassed of, of us. But yeah, now I'm biased. Obviously it's what I do and I truly believe in video, but you're someone who has gone through the motions now and you also have the same thoughts. So <laughs> as yeah. much as I think video, everyone should have video, <laughs> I'm not hardcore yeah. trying to sell it. I'm just saying, you know, don't, it can be one of the biggest regrets. So just think long and hard about, you know, what your choices are and who your priorities are for sure. So you don't yeah, have regrets. It totally. And like the little things like the customized robes or the napkins or all those things are like super important. But I will say like at the end of the day, people don't remember those, those things. Um, and you want, if you want a memory to live on forever, um, there's no better way than, than a video. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's been such a pleasure sitting with you, I guess, lastly, and you've given a lot of advice, but just one general kind of piece of advice that you would give anyone who's probably moving their wedding to 2021 at this point, but, you know, anyone who's getting married, one last piece of advice. Yeah, and I think this one's like timely for right now, too, because a lot of people have had to compromise or push back um, their weddings, which is really unfortunate, but my biggest piece of advice would be to really like stick to your guns and to not be afraid of doing something a little bit different. Um, like what we, what we did was different than what any of our friends and family had ever done. Um, and at the time it seemed like a little bit crazy and we had all these ideas that we wanted to execute on, um, and a lot of resistance, but in the end, like everyone sort of thanked us for having something different and bringing something different to the table. Um, so I would say like, if you have an idea of like doing an outdoor wedding and no one's ever done it before, like having something a little different, do it. It's, it's your day. It represents you. And like, it's a great way to just like showcase you and your husband's love for one another. And like, don't be afraid to be different and not to be, um, like as cookie cutter as, as the rest. So yeah. if you want to think outside the box, think outside the box and Try not to think so much about opinions and judgments, that kind of yeah. thing. Just go for yeah. it. Be, be unique, be you, and start exactly. your wedding off being, essentially being yourself. Exactly. And what a great opportunity, like post-COVID in this new normal. Um, people are going to have, like, you can reinvent the, the whole sort of experience of a wedding. Absolutely. Uh, what a great time to, to do that. Couldn't agree more. Well, yeah. Vanessa, Mrs. Chopra, I like to call you now, your married name. It's been a pleasure to sit with you and see you again since it's been a few months. And I really, really want to thank you for coming on and dropping all of this hot advice thank for you. our listeners. You. So yeah, nice. I hope it was helpful. For sure. Absolutely. Thank you so thank much for your time. And I always like to end off every episode with a cheers. So if you have a mug, let's see it. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. <laughs>
भारती पृथ्व्या वैश्वान्नर्मित मजात कपी घुम साम्राज्य दिधि जनासन्ना पात्र जनियंतु देवा स्वाहा ओम बाति धा स्वाहा ओम वसुपुत्र श्री सत्धार वसुपुत्र श्री सत्धार श्री सत्धार दिस आफ्टरनून वी आर कमिंग टुगेदर टू डू द सेम थिंग इन डिफरेंट वेज एंड व्हाट इज द सेम नो मैटर हाउ वी सेलिब्रेट इट इज द कमिटमेंट ऑफ मैरिज द लव ऑफ मैरिज the dedication of marriage and the lifelong lasting part of that commitment by celebrating both together and by recognizing that central core of the beauty of love Love you, Vanessa. Love you, Nabeen. Love you. To friends that have become family, and family that will always stay friends. I love every single one of you guys. Like legit cannot believe that this day is finally here. I feel like we've been planning for it forever. I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited for you and Nav, and enjoy every moment of this day. We love you. Everyone loves you. So happy for you. Cheers, man. Dear friends, we have come together in the presence of God to witness the marriage of Naveen and Vanessa and to rejoice with them. As husband and wife give themselves to each other in love, they shall grow together and be united in that love. best friend you will be very good husband and wife we share everything with him or her okay so be first of all best friend keep open your file always you will be happy so vanisha who is your best friend you speak naveen and naveen you who is your best friend vanessa i naveen take you vanessa to be my wife I Vanessa take you Naveen to be my husband to have and to hold from this day forward for better and for worse for richer and poorer in sickness and in health to love and to cherish for the rest of our lives for the rest of our lives this is my solemn vow this is my solemn vow may bhagwan ji bless both of you give you happiness all the time as you are today so please stand up and change your seats and sit as husband and wife i declare that they are husband and wife I want to thank you all for coming and making this day possible. Everyone, we love you so so much and just have an amazing party tonight. gift of god and a means of his grace in which man and woman 
become one flesh. It is God's purpose that, as husband and wife give themselves to each other in love, they shall grow together and be united in that love.